everyone! Welcome back to Miss Jody's Music Time! Today we have an exciting field trip to the Flutes of the Forest! And you're probably thinking, do flutes go in the forest? Do they come from the forest? No! But it's just funny, when I set up all my flutes, it looks like a forest of, of instruments because there's all these tall things sticking up everywhere. So I called this the Flutes of the Forest. So today I want to introduce you to all kinds of different flutes. So I decided to come out here in my yard. And if you see a dog in my yard, that is my dog Remington. You may have seen my cats in some other videos. Those cats are named Tink and Tootsie. And uh, I think that's all the animals you should see in my videos. The rest are in my barn and they won't come out. So today, we're going to learn about some, some unusual flutes and some things that are also called whistles. So let's get started with some of our interesting flutes of the forest. First, let's talk about this regular C flute. This flute is the size flute that most everybody starts on. Um, it, this particular one is a little bit longer because it has one extra key um, because it has an, one extra note at the bottom of its range. But this is generally the size flute that everyone starts on. And it's got a lovely, lovely sound to it. And I'm just going to give you a little taste of that. wonderful sound to it and it's super fun to play. When I started playing the flute, I was not on this flute. Um, I was on a student model flute, which I got from uh, a former babysitter of mine who was graduating from high school and she was no longer going to use her flute. So that's what I got started on. And then uh, this is actually only the second flute that I've had. And I got this um, from my flute professor uh, while I was studying in, in high school. So this is a regular C flute. Um, now, I want to show you the second most common um, instrument in the, in the flute world, and that is the piccolo. The piccolo is obviously much smaller than the flute, but surprising as it is, it almost has all the same number of keys on it. They're just really tight together. And if you've met me, then you'd know that this instrument fits me really well because my hands are the size of a small child's hands. And so playing this instrument is very comfortable for me because my fingers don't have to have to go very far and they don't have to stretch to cover those keys. So the piccolo is a much higher sound than the flute is because it's half the size. And if we remember, the smaller the instrument, the higher the sound is gonna be. So this is the piccolo. So you can see that that has a much higher sound to it. In our orchestra, we only use one piccolo at a time, unless we're playing Stars and Stripes, and then we try to line up a lot of us. Um, but for the most part, we use one piccolo because of the, of the uh, solid sound and the high pitch and the, the volume that it can give. Uh, we only need one of them <laughs> for our orchestra uh, to cut through and, and really make a nice balance in the orchestra. Let's look at another flute that's a little bit different. The next flute I want to show you is called an E flat flute. It's a flute that's in between the size of a piccolo and a regular flute. I'm going to back up a little bit so you can see the difference in size. It's just a little bit smaller. So let me put my flute down. This E flat flute has a really neat, sweet sound to it. The higher notes uh, resemble a lot of the piccolo sound, whereas the lower notes resemble more of a flute sound. Um, I'm going to play a little bit from a song called uh, Wind Song by Sonny Burnett, and this is the second movement, Zephyr. that 
the upper notes sounded a lot more like a piccolo and the low ones sounded a lot more like a flute. Again, it's a very, very neat instrument. This instrument is kind of rare. It was only made for about 20 years around the 1940s and um, it was at about the same time as like the E-flat clarinet was being made uh, and this one just didn't catch on as much as other flutes did and other instruments did, uh, variations of instruments. And so uh, they stopped making them and so these are kind of hard to find. So I'm very uh, pleased that I was able to find and, and purchase one um, because it's a really, really neat and unique instrument to hear. Some of you may be wondering what this crazy little button is here. I will tell you that um, this can be an electric flute. I can plug it into an amplifier and it becomes electrified, uh, but I don't have the cord to do that, So, but that's what this is. The person that owned it before me um, usually plugged it into an amp. Let's try another flute. We're going to go a little bit bigger this time. Okay, the next flute I want to show you is called the alto flute. The alto flute is uh, a good deal bigger than the regular C flute and that means it's going to have a much lower and more mellow sound to it. Now some alto flutes have what's called a curved head joint um, just specifically for the hand position to be more comfortable. I have one that's a straight head joint and you will see that my straight head joint is exactly the length I can play with my arms fully extended. If my alto flute was any longer, I wouldn't be able to reach it. Luckily this one, uh, my fingers can reach just fine. You can see it has a beautiful, very calming kind of sound to it, and it's it's just lovely to play. Now I want to show you an instrument that's even bigger than this one. Are you ready to see a bass flute? That's right, this is called a bass flute. And when we um, talk about a bass flute, Typically, the time that we're going to use a bass flute is in flute quartets. Um, I'm part of a flute quartet and we often have uh, two regular flutes, an alto and a bass, uh, so that we get that different range of sound and those different chords that are nicely filled out when we have that range of, of sound coming from two regular flutes, an alto, and a bass. There's a lot of different combinations we can use in our flute quartet, but the flute quartet is usually where you're going to find this instrument. It doesn't give out a ton of volume, but it does provide that bass sound, that, that really good foundation that you're looking for when you have a group and you want to have those nice full chords coming in. So let me just give you a little a little taste of this. Oh, I also want to mention, see how it's got the curved head joint to it? There is no way my arms would be long enough if this was a straight flute. So that's why they curve it around. All bass flutes have a curved head joint. <laughs> Again, you can see that it's not a very loud instrument, but it sure does have a nice, rich, rich tone to it for those nice bass notes that we want. Let's look at some other kinds of flutes. If you're thinking to yourself, boy, I'd like to try an instrument, but I'm not sure I want to invest all that money into a, an expensive uh, instrument like maybe a flute, you might try something that's a little bit more simple, like a recorder. Most fourth graders do have a recorder session to their music lessons in school, 
Um, but that's this is a great instrument if you just want to have something fun to try and play. Um, it's it's a real easy fingering system. You've got a hole in the back for your thumb, and then you have one, two, three keys, one, two, three, four for your fingers, and it's real easy to blow into. So it's a real easy instrument to catch on to. And in fact, my conductor, Carl Topolo, is actually offering free recorder lessons right now. So you might want to check that out. Now, I wanted to show you some other variations that I happen to have because I like to show you some very odd instruments. One is this tiny little baby recorder. Isn't it cute? It's very, very tiny. And I got it for a dollar at Target. And then, I don't know where I found this one, but it's a very odd looking recorder. Its keys are kind of offset from each other to fit your fingers. Isn't that weird? Yeah, it's pretty fun to play too. Also in the world of recorders, we have Variations of sizes, just like that little tiny one, that's kind of just a toy one. But we also have variations of sizes of recorders. There's one that's smaller than the regular recorder. This one is a little bit bigger, and it's called an alto recorder. There's also bass recorders, too. And this one has a very, very lovely, uh, again, mellow sound to it because it's a little bit lower. finger had to find that last note. So this is called an alto recorder. The recorders aren't very expensive. Um, I know that my plastic one came for, it was I think five dollars, I think this was thirty. And so if you want to invest just a little bit of money and have some fun, this is a great way to go. Let me show you another thing that you could buy if you want to have just uh, a nice inexpensive start to playing some very cool instruments. The next thing I thought I'd show you are these whistles. They're called tin whistles. And they have a, such a fun spirit to them. And they're very easy to play. And they're very inexpensive. Uh, they come in different sizes. The most common one is this size. That is in the key of D. And they have some other sizes. This one is in the key of E flat. This one is in the key of F. And the various sizes create the different sounds for these tin whistles. So let me just give you a little taste of what these sound like. If you are a person that watched the movie Titanic a long time ago when it came out, uh, this song is called John Ryan's and it's the polka, the little um, fife polka that they played when they danced down below deck. see that's got a great cute sound to it. Now if I move up to a little bit just a little bit smaller whistle this is an E flat whistle And then we have one more whistle that's just a little bit smaller than that. And it is called the uh, whistle in the key of F. So you can see these whistles are tremendous fun and they're really nice and small and they're super super fun to learn and 
and easy to learn. They just have they just have six little holes on them, so you're not even using all your fingers. Let's take a look at some other flutes that I have with me today. Some of the other flutes that I have to show you today came from various places that I've gone along my journey through life, or some places that I haven't gone, and people have brought me these flutes. This particular set of flutes right here are two flutes that came from China. My husband got to go visit his brother who was living in China at the time, and he asked me what I wanted him to bring back for me. And I said, oh, I want you to bring back some Chinese flutes. So he brought me these two back, and I want you to hear what they sound like. This one is made out of bamboo, and typically you would normally blow through the very first hole, and you put your fingers on all the other holes. But if you notice on this flute, there's this hole, and then this hole, and then my finger can reach one, but not very good for all the rest. So I thought, well, that's kind of odd because my fingers can't even reach the holes that they put in this flute. So I tried something different, and I started blowing in the second hole. Now let me let you hear what that sounds like. actually worked. I was a little surprised, but I knew that I was not going to be able to play in this first hole and finger any of the any of the other holes. The other flute that he brought for me is made of jade. It's a stone flute. You can hear that it's very very hard stone. And I thought to myself, "My goodness, did he like spend a million dollars on this flute?" And he told me that no, there are like 15 on every street corner. So, I guess they're pretty common over there. So this is what this flute sounds like. That's a nice little sound to it. These are instruments that I don't usually use to perform on, but they're kind of fun to play with. Let me show you some other interesting ones. This little flute is a bamboo flute that was made in uh, Virginia and it has a really lovely sound to it. It's really a pretty sound to it, uh, not like some of the cheaper things that I may have uh, gotten in other places, such as this one. This one has a really good sound to it too, but not quite as good as that last one we heard. I'm not sure where I got this one, but it's fun to play too. And then I have one from Colonial Williamsburg that's uh, the typical fife that they would have used for the drum and fife cores that were back in the, in the colonial times. And then, this one's the most bizarre one you'll see, it's a flute made out of PVC pipe. That's right. One of my friends decided to try something strange. She was teaching music at the time, and she thought, I wonder if I can make a flute out of a PVC pipe. So on the end, you'll notice with every flute that there's a, a hole to blow in, there's a stopped end, and then there's a tube with holes in it, and then an open end at the other side. So she had to get a cork that fit this to, to stop that side, and then she had to measure the distance between the, the tone hole, or excuse me, the uh, lip hole, and then all the tone holes, and they actually are different sizes, if you can see. They had to be drilled in a certain place, but also be a certain, uh, certain diameter. So this is what a PVC flute sounds like. Not too bad for a PVC pipe, right? 
right. Okay, let's look at just a couple others. This flute is my silliest flute. It is a slide whistle. Not much to practice, but I will tell you that it comes in handy when I'm doing programs for little kids. They really do like the sound of this one. The other one that's very unusual that I really don't play at all um, is this flute that I got in high school and it is a glass flute. So it is very, very beautiful, but it's really hard to play. It's hard to get my air to hit the edge of that hole and it's very hard to close those holes to get really good sound to come out. But I wanted to show it to you. It is a glass flute. Now, something similar to uh, the, the early Native American flutes and stuff that we know about are these little treasures that are called ocarinas. Another fun thing for you to try if you're just wanting to start trying different crazy instruments. These instruments usually have two holes on the back and that's where your thumbs go and then your fingers go on the holes that are on the top of the ocarina and then you would blow right here. I'm afraid this one is kind of cracked so it doesn't have a great seal to it but this one is another kind of ocarina again it's got two holes on the back to put your thumbs the other one is for your air to come out and this one is actually has eight holes to it Pretty great sound for a strange looking weird instrument. And last but not least, I wanted to show you my Native American flute. Now, again, if you're thinking about trying out an instrument, there are no easier instruments than, than this one to play. It also has a sound that is so calming and so relaxing that I know in my retirement years, this is what I'm gonna be doing. I'm gonna be sitting by a lake and I'm gonna be playing my Native American flute. And if you wanna come and join me, you're welcome to. So I wanted to give you a good idea of what this sounds like. This one has actually six holes, but there's music written for five holes. So there's a band right here that covers that third hole. So I just wanted you to hear what it sounds like. At the top, it just has a little tube for me to blow in. You don't have to have the tube, but you can. And again, a wonderful, wonderful sound. So relaxing. So if you're interested, these are usually handmade by crafters. A lot of times you can find them at um, like the festivals that are in the in the woods. Uh, I know of a Shaker Woods Festival, the Oak Ridge Festival. Um, so if there's if there's uh, any kind of festivals that are in woods with crafters, this is often where you can find these Native American flutes. Well, it's time to leave our flute forest. I do hope you've enjoyed checking out all these different kinds of flutes that we have to enjoy. So many different kinds of sounds, so many very accessible things to learn if you're interested. And I do hope you try some in your own time. It's very, very wonderful to be able to play these instruments. Before I go, we are going to do a little craft where you can make your own homemade instrument and kind of flute and I think you're going to have a good time with it. Let's go inside for that. The flute that I haven't mentioned yet, which has been in history for a very long time, is this flute. The pan flute. This flute is made up of lots of individual bamboo uh, sections and you can see that they're of all different lengths to make the different kinds of sound. I don't know if you can see this very well, but they're also 
different sizes and diameter. So the one thing I did not know about the pan flute until I started playing it and until I started making this craft was that the bottoms of the pipes are actually closed off. I was thinking that they were just solid open pipes, but as it turns out, these are closed. So I tried to make my own pan flute out of straws and you can try this at home uh, with just some regular drinking straws. Uh, the straws I have here are just a tiny bit bigger than the normal straws. They are smoothie straws. So one of the things that helps is that a pan flute has this bar across it holding all the pieces together. So it helps to hold those, those parts together. So with my straws, I simply took some masking tape and I put those together that way. I also used some tape to tape the bottom so that the bottoms of the straws were closed. Um, and one of the things that helped with that was folding the straw ends over and then closing it with the, the tape because it just seemed to make a better seal. Um, these kind of straws, you can see have a little bit of uh, sound that comes out of them if you can get that right edge to your, to your airstream. I also tried using straws and using a popsicle stick to uh, hold that firmly together. And I, on this one, I also tried to cut some notches out of the tops of the straws. And that kind of worked well also. It was just an experiment of trying to cut out a little square notch out of each of those. So sometimes it, it seemed like it helped and sometimes it didn't. So you might want to try that out. The other thing I did on this one, instead of taping the bottoms, I used hot glue to seal the bottoms. Be careful because the straw with the hot glue is very hot. So I kept burning my fingers. But uh, if you can get those closed with hot glue, that's actually uh, the best way that those bottoms can be closed. So each one has its own way of sounding and you can cut the straws to be whatever length you want and get those notes to tune to a whole scale if you want to. Enjoy that craft and I hope you tune in for more of Miss Jody's videos. it's time for Miss Jody's Mad Jam Song Selections. If this is one of your first videos, you will find that at the end of each of my videos, I like to make some song suggestions for songs that will put you in a good mood, maybe be awesome to dance to, and just have a good time with. They put you in a good mood. So today, I'm going to start with a recommendation of the song Mickey by Tony Basil. Oh, Mickey, you're so fun, you're so fun, you blow my mind. Hey, Mickey, it's just one of my coolest songs that I can't help but smile to. The next song I want to suggest is Susudio by Phil Collins. Long ago, I was able to attend a Phil Collins concert when he was touring, and it was awesome to see him not only sing, but also play the drums. He is an excellent drummer. And the last song I want to recommend this time is Sir Duke by Stevie Wonder. It is a cool song with a lot of cool instruments in it. So check it out. I hope you tune in again sometime and join us for another Miss Jody's Music Time. See you later.